this week is all about amazing animals. This is your big moment, this is. Seeing their food, sleeping all day. Amazing attractions and amazing memories. The last time we came to this resort was in 2017. section at um, Rafiki's Planet Watch yesterday, didn't you? So, yeah, he gets to see and pet some goats. So we should be having an absolutely lovely time there with some more um, animal interactions. If you have a look on the website, Mark was just saying, they do have some kind of walk around days, but that's on very set days where you can just go and have a little walk around and they throw the doors open if you like, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it's only on very set occasions. They also do something called Sunset with Capybaras. I've seen that on the website as well. Um, but yeah, those are very specific activities and you don't, especially for the walk around, there's no animal interaction with that one. That literally is just a walk around. So we are technically, officially in St. Cloud. So this literally is in the middle of like rural Florida housing estate. So this is real Florida. We don't have any sunglasses. So we're really out in the sticks. It's not very often you see a full-blown Arctic lorry in someone's garden. No. Uh, there's a lot of full-blown Arctic lorries in that garden. They've got like proper small holdings. We are here. He's taking a bath. He loves climbing up on my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> you want to pet him? Let me jump up on my shoulder. He's thinking about it. Oh. Hey, little fella. <laughs> <laughs> That's his favorite. If he could just stay on my shoulder all day. Like, <laughs> you want to go back in your house? There it is. <laughs> go make sure you catch all the bugs. 
I have two skunks, which I believe they both might be in that box there. I see oh, tail. I can see a little tail in there. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, so they're very cute little guys. People actually do have uh, pet skunks here, and the people that breed them do a surgery and remove their scent glands so they uh, can't spray you anymore. But then people get them and realize that's still a wild animal in your house. They're up all night, tearing up everything. Yeah. Not the best pet idea. No. <laughs> so we have our two skunks, so Smokey and Isabel are snuggled together. Berta and Raph. So they're sleeping up in their box. They are a native bird of prey. They're full grown at this size. And they are federally protected. But we do have permits to have them because they were unfortunately hit by cars. And they both actually ended up with a left eye. Take them in, give them a nice little setup. Keep their guests about a native wildlife. And they're, and they're full size of that, so. Yep. Really? Yep, full grown there. So they're cute little guys. Hi, bud. Hey. Like anyone got hey, little for fella. Me? Mm hmm. Hi Marvin. This is Mary Kate of Hot and Top Cameron. And their biggest threat is deforestation. So people are the main cause for that, of course. Um, she's wonderful to kind of teach people that we need to pay attention to what we're buying and supporting, where things are coming from. You'd be surprised, I know here in the US, a lot of our produce labels, if you start reading labels, they're made in South America. Uh, it is way cheaper to buy a big chunk of her home, clear it out there, plant different things there yep. instead and then ship them back up here. You. So he is very sociable. <laughs> Our original three we actually got because of another place struggling with COVID. They were very hands off. They don't like you to touch them or play with them. They're going to run and hide. So these are one of the most widespread wildcats of South America. I say they're tiny but mighty. She's actually full grown. She's eight years old. Just to pop out. Six pounds. So this is Aries, my tiny little wildcat. And Joffrey's cats are actually one of the most widespread wildcats of South America. Now, unfortunately, they are also facing a lot of those human conflicts in the wild, so that habitat loss, conflicts with farmers, car strikes, dog attacks, all these issues, not too much being done to protect these little guys because people have no clue that they're out there. And let me tell you, I love him. You cannot pay me to have a fox like this in my house. No. They smell real bad. So if you guys get a nice like skunky smell out of here, it is the foxes. They really? They pee and poop on everything they can to set mark. That would be all over your it's house. It's one of the big things that... Um... We have two silver foxes in here. Actually, we have quick silver there and then crystal should be laying up on the bed. So these guys are absolutely gorgeous as well. And these are again the red fox, just a different color. So they're the same as Gambit. Uh, these are just considered more of a melanistic color, so that's the lack of the light pigmentation. And we rescued these two at the end of last year. They came from a fur farm up in Minnesota. Oh! Yeah, so very, very sad living conditions. They were in these tiny little wire cages built off the floor. Uh, when we got them here, they'd never touched the floor in their life. Oh, wow. So very, very sad. Yeah, now they get to run and play and dig and yeah. get waterfront property <laughs> to hang out by. Uh, but, you know, I think my biggest comment people always say is, you know, we didn't, we didn't know fur farming existed here in the U.S. especially. And it does. It is a legal really? thing that happens. Uh-huh. Um, because people are still buying furs. So Really? Yeah. Even with all the synthetic stuff out well, there? I think everyone thinks it's fake because we don't do that, right? Oh, gosh. It's not all fake. So we need to be educated, responsible consumers. We need to know what we're yeah. actually buying yeah. and supporting. Because I think most people think they buy something that's fake fur. And it might not be. Wow. Uh, so yeah, if we stop doing that, then yeah, it won't be a thing that happens anymore. These are our Patagonian Daisy. Hi, buddy. This is Pete. He came on some lettuce. And then Piper, and then they got a little baby here. It's about a month old now. Cute little guys. Oh. Piper, a little like happy bars on there, Finn. Finn. A little like happy bars. just got long legs. Yeah, so these guys, they are basically a, a big guinea pig or smaller versions of capybaras. They just dig instead of swim. So they're in that rodent family. They're from South America. Um, these two actually were ex pets that people had as well. So you get them as a cute little baby. Oh. People don't realize they get like 30 pounds, can run really fast and kick you really yeah. hard. They also have a cute little roommate up in the box in the blankets is our owl monkey. We're right on cue. Oh. There's Wally. Hi, buddy. So Wally is uh, a nocturnal primate from South America. So he's up at night and he always stays up high. The caveys are up during the day. They're always on the ground, but they're all herbivores. They're all from South America. Perfect little roommates let them work together as well. Oh, good boy. Oh. This is Mommy, yes. And then Dad Bayo over here. See if he wants to bite a lettuce. Bayo! Hey, yeah. Uh, 
I'm going to give you all the entire piece of lettuce. Don't break it up tiny. They have big room in teeth, right? So when you feed them, you're going to feed them the whole piece of lettuce. When they take it, let go. They're going to like a piece of spaghetti, basically. Then feel free to pet them, love on them, get some pictures with them. They love getting back scratches. However, they don't love being like hugged and restrained. Makes sense. Uh, so I always like them to kind of choose to hang out with us. But Penelope, we love hanging out with people. TJ, he's a little bit more shy. He may or may not hang out with us. It's always up to him. He's actually nine years old. In the wild, they live like six. Wow. He's an old man. He does have some cataracts. So if he comes around us, just move a little slower. He doesn't see as well. Uh, but he's a very sweet boy. Too. But Penelope <laughs> loves the attention. So we are going to go in and hang out with them. Give them some snacks. They're going to be your best friends here. <laughs> what are you doing? You look so comfy there, Penelope. Don't you? <laughs> Stop petting him. He'll keep eating. <laughs> Boy, can't multitask. Sorry, guys. You want to come up here and give him his lettuce? There you go. I got it, dude. Hi, Penelope. Nice and slow. There you go. He's like, hi. We will be friends. Friends for food. <laughs> I love the way he's stopping as he's, as he's yeah, eating. Yeah, yeah, he literally can't do both. And PJ, he's more of a like relationship kind of animal. He actually came to us from the Columbus Zoo in Ohio. He was in a little stage show. So he just had a group of trainers that worked with him. Penelope is very sociable. We actually got her to be a friend for PJ. So we were asked to take him in and uh, got him here and knew he was going to meet a friend. So when Penelope came from another zoo, we got her young and let everybody hang out with her as she was growing up. Um, so she's very, very outgoing. And again, him just having like, you know, the group of trainers that raised him on top of the cataract he's got now. Also, Penelope is the boss lady in here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah. And if you guys, again, kind of slowly go around him, but if you pet him and he kind of knows you're there, um, you guys can all pet him a little bit. He loves under the chin and his armpits. That's his favorite. <laughs> hey. Oh yeah. Come in, Finn. This is your big moment. This is. Yeah, you love on him more. There you go. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's all good. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I think you're still going to step in the food too. Oh, you're just going to lie down. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> hey! Is that a llama? Yeah, it's only just a llama because it doesn't like being petty. Hello. Much needed. It's impressive, it's an impressive flash, it's nice. Okay. You didn't say hi to him? Hello. Hi. Hi. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, good girl. <laughs> so we got him for that uh, shell injury. And then the big guys that we have over here are our African spurt eyes or sulcatas. They're from Africa. They can get about 200 pounds and live around 100 years. Of ah. <laughs> course. In the wild, you actually see them. They live in the rainforest, right? They get rained on so much. You'll see them growing moss and algae on them in the wild, which is great for camouflage, you know, brown and green hiding up in the treetop. Of course. They'd rather save their energy digesting their food, sleeping all day. But they do, of course, have some predators as well to worry about. One of their biggest threats in the wild is going to be a harpy eagle. Uh, we do not pick our sloths and pass them around to people because that would be really scary if you're a wild sloth. Yeah. Um, so that's why we think it's wonderful. We do all positive reinforcement. Totally her choice to come say hi to us. Clearly she came right on over. She knows she gets her favorite snack, and uh, I think it's wonderful to let people 
make the connection with animals like this. And we hope people leave here wanting to do a better job taking care of our ecosystems. But it's always her choice to, you know, participate with us, which I think is pretty cool. Now we've had an absolutely lovely morning at Amazing Animals Inc. And we got to feed and pet a capybara. Um, and we got to see the barnyard animals. And we saw the donkey, there was goats, there was a llama. That was good. And we got to meet a sloth as well. So it was very cool. We saw lots of other animals as well and we learned loads of different things about all of the animals that they have there at the sanctuary. Um, people going and doing these tours around Animal Inc are the reason why they're able to look after the animals as well as they do. It's their biggest source of income. So if you're looking for something different to do and you've got kids that love animals, we highly recommend that you go and give it a try. It's an hour and a half about 35 minutes away from Disney, go and find some wolf of Florida and go and support the local conservation efforts. However, do you mind from the fact that it's hot, make sure you take some sort of head covers, if you know, hats or whatever, uh, make sure you take a drink. Yes, we and just give it hot. We went a little underprepared. And Jacob got a little bit overwhelmed and a little bit hot, didn't you, sweetheart? But it was okay. We still made it all the way through. We still got to see everything. But he did need to um, have a rest stop afterwards and uh, get cool and get a drink. So but we're all good now. Interesting things. Interesting things, Jacob. That, that someone took in a squirrel. But squirrels, what are they? Wild animals, Jacob. Exactly. And, and, and do you want to have it as a pet, which of course was the worst idea possible. Not a good idea, was it? And they and that was the problem there, wasn't it? They had a lot of um, like, old, ex uh, uh, like exotic animals. They were, and people tried to have them as pets and then found that they didn't make good pets, did they? Just have a good old dog, dog cat, parrot. Yeah. What? Maybe a parrot, bitch, bitch. Perfect. Not parrot. What will not hurt you, guaranteed. What about you, Finn? What did you learn today that was interesting? What did you learn about capybaras? You can't cuddle them. They don't like to be snuggled, do no. they? But they Why? do like Scratchy being. Under the chin. Yeah, they don't like being snuggled, but they like being petted, don't they? They like back rubs. They like belly rubs. Yeah. And they like going in the pool, don't they? Yeah. Do you remember that she said they could hold their breath for about five minutes? Yeah. That's longer than most people That's are. That's a long time. I don't know I'm going to five minutes. So, Finley, was meeting a capybara everything you expected? Yeah. Was it more than what you expected? Mm. And do you love them more now than you did before? Yeah. Yeah. I've got one more thing to say. One of them that we met. Was the girl and her name was Penelope. Penelope, yeah. And she was pregnant. She months. was. And 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 Capybaras can be pregnant up to five years. Five, five months. months. Yeah. So we did learn some amazing facts about the amazing and animals. Also, Capybaras will have their children for two months until like they don't want them anymore. Like, yeah. Away. When they grow up, Mommy's like, yeah, you'd lot go off and uh, do your own thing now. That's what Mommy thinks, isn't she? Well, the to... Mommy Capybara, anyway. That's Penelope and PJ's kind of blind, kind of blind and not that blind. Yeah. Like, he's <laughs> kind of shy to do. Amazing Animal Inc. was a hit with us. Fab little morning out doing That's something cool. different. They had animals that I just didn't expect them to have. Yes. Yeah. Ring-tailed lemurs. I was not expecting to see, see yeah. King Julian no. in somebody's, essentially in somebody's back garden. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. King Julian. And I think it was crazy that so many people have tried to have these animals as pets. And then discovered that they don't make good pets. The red squirrel. And another big cat. I don't know what it's called now, but the big cat. 
Oh, the Bobcat. The Bobcat. Yeah. I don't know, I'm going to have one of them really wild going to try and kill me in my snake cats. Yep. How did they do? In an apartment. It wasn't even in a house. To be honest, if I had to choose, like, having a wad and also or having no pets ever again, I would just know having no pets ever again. Because, uh, well, I raised her boys, but I would never have a wild cat in my life running around. No, it's just true, Jacob. Now, I've got a much more important question. Okay. And if anyone happens to know the answer, please comment below. Can you tell me what happened to Bob's barricades? Dodge this rain that's coming by going on Star Tours. That's the plan. How is that going to help? So we're very quickly hot footed it in that direction to get to Star Sprinting. Tours before it, it, it is just it down. chucks it. Like, chucks it, chucks it. So we're just swinging past Indiana Jones. Past Vacation Fun Shorts with Vicky and Minnie. Mm -hmm. Round past the Backlocked Express restaurant. Here it comes. Because the rain's coming. Move it. To start us just round this corner Move here. It. Come on, quick. That's reservation booked for Rise of the Resistance at 3.53. So we've got to kill a bit of time. And it's only currently a 10 minute wait for Star Tours, so that's not quick. too bad. Ten minutes, but we've literally just walked on it, got like complete walk. I know you have a spy on board. I'm afraid there's been a terrible mistake. This is a little change from last year. When we came in here, if you wanted to build a lightsaber, they built it for you. What? And they've now gone back to you being able to build your own, which is really cool. So we joined the resistance whilst on Star Tours. And now, that was what was being boarded up last time. And now we're headed into a Galaxy Edge. We're heading to Batu. And so off we go. And now we're off to join the resistance. I am Lieutenant Beck. As you heard from Ray, I have been tasked with getting you to Bakara. We're picking up an unusual signal. Are you spotting anything? Cargo vessel TR-141, identify yourselves and prepare to be boarded. I have a bad feeling about this. Stand back from those doors. You've chose the wrong side, and now you will pay. You know the location of the secret base, and I will take it from you. Hurry and don't get caught. You're not on the wrong way. The doors are the prison. <laughs> Target. 
Nice job, recruits. Not what you signed on for, but hey, your resistance now. Succeeded. We escaped the First Order and we kept the location of the secret base a secret. I think that means we're now part of the resistance. So the boys are playing in the background and we have had an absolutely lovely afternoon at Hollywood Studios. This really is a wrap for the day. We're attempting to get into Disney's Art of Animation so we can meet family that are arriving. Okay, so they let us in. The I didn't think they were going to let us in. So maybe we don't need to end it yet. It's not the Avatar. Normally they don't let you in. And because this is a Skyliner resort, I was thinking we've got no chance. Bruh. No chance, but yeah, no, we're in. Okay, now you can choose. So we'll sit around and wait for our family to arrive. time we came to this resort was in 2017 and it was the year we got married and me mark and the boys came here for a family photo shoot as like a bit of an engagement shoot with our photographer and we had pictures done in the car section that was the last time we were here so nice to come and uh, meet them here relive some memories And the boys at that time were certainly a heck of a lot smaller than what they are now. Lots of pictures of the different movies on. So we'll have a little walk around the ink and paint shop here at the Art of Animation Resort. So obviously being highly themed towards the cartoons, there are loads of fun things in here. Say something. If you've got younger kids, I've been here like 30 seconds, but on the face of it, this is definitely more younger kid friendly. Yeah. But that's what it looks like. Like it's more almost directed at younger kids. Yeah. Whereas like Animal Kingdom Lodge and almost probably all the Dutch resorts we've stayed at the more older kid adult sort of thing because there's nothing this is really like Quite vibrant colours, chaos type, young kid type thing. <laughs> Just went up in there. Basically translates to Mark's worst nightmare. Uh, no, no, I haven't got young kids anymore, so I don't care. <laughs> oh no. What's going to happen? Uh, watch out behind you, Finn. This is not going to bode well. Yeah. Yeah. Remember your Jedi training from last year? He doesn't, he doesn't. Woo, they have Halloween merch in here. Still no Sanderson sister stuff though. I think I was a bit too early for that. Oh, is it a little light? It's a balloon light. There you go, balloon Cute. light. Certainly a much bigger store than the one in the Grand Floridian. You think? It's mahoosive. So we're having to abandon that plan, sadly. Although the flight got in on time, there's an absolutely ginormous queue for a hire car and so they're still waiting and uh, they've got no idea how long they're going to be and it is already now nearly five past nine and they're still in the queue and the airport is a good half an hour away so it could be like half ten before they get here when they're shuttered because it's been such a long day so best thing we can do is to call it a night and catch up in the morning which is what we're going to do so we're going to head back to the Grand Floridian now and call it a night ourselves so I'm going to say good night and we will see you tomorrow bye made it this far through our videos I'd just like to say thank you very much from all of us for watching our vlog really appreciate you watching our videos and following our channel please do subscribe and you'll be able to see all of our new and upcoming videos here in Florida from this August trip please do like our videos and just drop a few comments down and thank you again from all of us for watching an awfully big adventure bye for now